Person 3. Darning. Introduce the lesson by referring to the children's baby sisters and brothers crawling on the floor and ask which garments they usually wear out by doing so. Flannel petticoats, etc. Or refer to the sleeves of their own dresses being usually the first part to wear out because of the extra rubbing they get on the desks, etc. Then ask how their mothers usually mend these parts. Patching and darning. Tell them that their lesson is to be on darning a thin place, as darning should precede patching. Write on the blackboard the first rule for darning. Never wait for a hole. Get the children to repeat it and elicit from them by questioning why we should not do so. First, it saves time. Second, it saves temper. Third, it looks neater as a nice darn doesn't show so much as a patch. Explain that darning is simply a kind of hand weaving in new mending material between the selvage threads over and under the weft threads to strengthen them. Tell the pupils that darning is usually done on the wrong side of the material. Show how to put the fabric over the first and second fingers, which must be slightly apart, and hold it in place by the thumb and third fingers. The selvage way of the fabric must lie over the fingers between the little finger and thumb, and they are to darn with the selvage. Point out that when doing the up row of darning, the children must rest the needle upon the first and second fingers of the right hand and hold it firmly with the thumb. Oh, damn it. When coming down, they hold it as they usually do and keep the right elbow well up from the side unless they're left-handed. Demonstrate all these points clearly. That's utter shite. <sighs> Show the children that they begin at the left-hand side, if they're right-handed, as it is less awkward to darn from the left side than from the right, and point the needle from the thumb to the little finger. Bloody hell, this is impossible. Let them put the needle in between two selvage threads and go up, taking up one thread and passing over one until they have ten loops on. Taking up one thread and passing over one until they have 10 loops on. Oh, bloody hell! Why is this so hard? Where the hell is that going? For the second row, show that the children must cross over one thread towards the right left, if you're left-handed, and put in the needle one thread up above the last stitch of the first row, as in figures one and two. Okay. Show them that they must take up the same number of loops as in the first row, and that they pass over the threads that they went under in the first row. Tell the children to leave a small loop at the end of each row, quarter of an inch, Explain that we generally darn a petticoat which has been washed and therefore has shrunk or grown less. We darn with new thread which, when washed, would shrink in, drag the material and tear the darn from the surrounding cloth. Therefore we leave the loops which allow the thread to shrink into that length. Show that if the children make a darn like figure three, the whole weight of the darn would rest on two threads, the one at the top and the other at the foot. 
The result would be that the piece darned would be torn away from the surrounding cloth and more holes made, and that therefore the children ought to make them like figures four, five or six, the shape depending on the position of the worn part. But figure six is the most useful method of doing it. Remind the children how funny it would look to see a girl with the elbow of a blue dress darned in scarlet thread and tell them that they use wool or cotton of a different colour from their fabric to let them see their work better and to give them a little variety in it. If the article to be darned is made of wool, then they must use wool, etc. Only they might be a little finer in texture. Write the three rules on the blackboard. Never wait for a hole. Avoid a straight edge and use thread as like the original as possible. Get the pupils to repeat these and question them as to their meaning. This is an original chemise and the darling on here is not exactly fabulous either. As soon as the pupils can do the darn nicely on canvas, let them try it on Lancashire or Yorkshire flannel, which have both very clear and distinct threads. The only difference on flannel or any fine material would be to lift two threads and pass over two when doing the darn and omit two threads between each row. It's always a good idea to follow the actual instructions in the book, which say that you practice on a coarser, looser woven material first.